What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Hi, I'm Kevin Moore, host of The Moore Show, and it's my passion to help you live your best life now. You might be looking to find answers on love, connecting with your life's purpose, reuniting with a loved one on the other side, discovering your past lives, or just helping you make sense, finding your direction now. So The More Show has collaborated with the most gifted readers around the world to form The More Show Psychics. Now my readers have a large range of skills to choose from to be of service to you and all my psychics are interviewed to show transparency with each interview available on the website. So call now dialing the numbers on the screen to speak to my operators 24-7 or go to tmspsychics.com to choose a reader or book online. The More Show Psychics, helping you transform your present moment into the most loving and happiest it can be. Now I also offer a full money back guarantee, so what have you got to lose? Empower your life now. Broadcasting from the UK and across the world online. You're now watching The Moore Show and I'm your host Kevin Moore. Now for the next hour I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. Now on today's show I'm about to be joined by my guest Mark Allen Frost. Now Mark will discuss his encounters with Seth whom he believes is the same spirit who previously communicated with Jane Roberts. Now Mark traced his interaction with Seth back to 2002 when one of his hypnotherapy clients inadvertently came into contact with the entity. Now during a subsequent session he tested this entity with verifiable questions and ultimately was convinced it was Seth. Now based on their communication, Frost explained that the entity also, represents right? a soul family which has communicated with humanity through millennia. Mark Frost, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be here. We really enjoyed your interview with us some time ago. It was a highlight of our career. Well, the love and appreciation, man. Well, thank you. But well, you know what? I really, uh, I was so happy at that time, and as, as I am now, to have you on. I was, <laughs> I was anticipating you come. You know, it's funny. I watched that interview, the, our first interview, which has now uh, just gone over thirteen thousand views, which is fantastic for this subject, right? Fantastic, yeah, and. Right. Um, I was watching it today and I was like, oh my God, well, I was saying this to your wife, Carol, in the morning when, when I spoke to her on the phone, I was like, there's no way I'm going to top that interview. That interview, uh, 
even for myself, was actually pretty good. I'm like, was I channeling in that interview? <laughs> Something was coming you through. Yeah, um, it was. Your higher self was in charge. <laughs> I think so. Well, I think it comes through quite a bit. My higher self in these interviews, and I'm not even sure when it when it when it switches on sometimes. So I really want you know I, after watching that original interview today, which I'm going to link at the bottom of the description right now uh, in the YouTube video. Um, I thought to myself, well, there's no way, there's no point in doing the same interview, right? Um, we could do right, but I think we're going to speak to Seth in this interview now. Just to let everyone know, um, Mark is coming on to the documentary we're doing called "They Call Us Channelers." Just go to theycalluschannels.com. And um, yeah, you know, to have yourself on this documentary means a lot. I know it means a lot to you, but it does mean a lot to me as well, brother, to have, have, you, have you on here. And I'm so looking forward to coming and meeting you in person because you're in, well, you're just outside um, San Francisco, aren't you, by about 90 minutes, I think? About 90 minutes, yeah. Well, maybe two hours, San Francisco. Yeah. Wow, I can't. North. I, yeah. yeah, I can't wait to see that 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 side of of, of the U.S. as well. So, um, okay, and I just want to mention as well, just before we start, that we're going to mention this at the end. Uh, you're up to a few different things right now. You've actually you're just about today to launch an Indiegogo campaign because you're actually doing your own film as well, aren't you? Yes, we're doing a film. Uh, we call it the Virtual Guy. It's going to be a comedy, sci-fi, soap opera. And I've got all my cast and crew dedicated to making this happen. And to s develop a fan base, we do have an Indiegogo campaign. We're going to jumpstart it probably tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, you can go to Indiegogo and uh, search for the Virtual Guy film. Absolutely. It's going to be pretty exciting. And what, what's inspired you, just, just very quickly, what's inspired you to do that uh, film as well? Uh, it was sort of an ongoing conversation between me and Seth. Um, everything that happens in my life develops out of a conversation between me and Seth. Yes. Uh, because we're sort of hardwired, connected. I'm always asking him for advice. Uh, he doesn't come in unwanted, but... In this case, I said, well, what's next for us, Seth? Because our book publishing thing seems to have uh, come to some sort of end point or transition into something else. And Seth says, well, uh, other forms of media. Uh, he knows that I, I enjoy comedy. He has this element in his books where he talks about good humor as a basis for positive realities, a simple accessing of uh, pleasure, elementary ecstasy also calls it, feeling good. Uh, in the literature, psychological literature, they call it flow. You're, you're feeling really good. You're connected to all, all of your portals and you're manifesting and you, <coughs> you're in love, basically. In love with yourself and everything else. So comedy seem right and I'm also interested in how technology is manifesting Seth talks it ab about it as the uh, neural structure of uh, the human beings exteriorizes itself and manifests in the form of these communication devices telephones pagers uh, all of this is uh, it comes from an inside context uh, the the neural structure of human beings. Uh, so we're going to try to demonstrate that in this movie, basically talking about uh, ancient wisdom concepts with humor so that we're providing wacky humor, yes, but underneath that, the subtext is message. Remember, remember what's really important. Loving, understanding, and courage is what Seth says is the most important. So that will be the subtext of this movie. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to link uh, your Indiegogo campaign just in the description as well. So if people would like to contribute or uh, towards this, which, um, I mean, you're only looking for a small amount in some respects, which yeah. is fantastic. Um, I think, sure. it, yeah, I think it's really achievable. So, you know, please support Mark uh, in, in, in this aspect as well. 
um, and uh, yeah, so that's in the description now as we speak. Um, so, okay, I, I'm you know let's start just from the beginning here as well because I, I do want to speak to Seth, right? We, you know, there's just so much to talk about here, but I think let's just have a very brief overview of Seth. I think if they want a more in-depth uh, understanding of your background and how this all works for you, they can get that in the previous interview. But let's just uh -huh. with with yourself then. Just just obviously you know you've got a st story here just for who, who is Seth. And how did you connect to Seth? I think people who know about Seth generally think of the, the Jane Roberts Seth. He came through Jane Roberts uh, while she was doing a, a Ouija board <coughs> experiment with her husband, Robert Butts. Uh, Seth came through and identified himself and in short order uh, started writing books through Jane very similar to the way it happened with uh, with us. Uh, but together, Jane Roberts and Seth wrote these seminal works. Uh, it's I see it as sort of the foundation of New Age literature, that genre. Uh, and it's essentially based on the premise that we are not powerless, we are not victims, we are literally the creators of our realities. Uh, Seth calls it the personal reality. Uh, with us, he calls it the personal reality field, bringing in that whole idea of uh, contiguous fields. Um, so Jane <clears throat> wrote all these wonderful books, inspired millions of people, mm, huge, uh, yeah. probably more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but when she made her transition at an early age, in her 50s, most people thought that Seth was uh, gone also, that Seth would never be heard of again. Uh, but even during the interim, uh, there was a 20-year hiatus uh, between Jane's death and Seth coming on with us. Uh, people like me, people who love Seth, were sort of desperate for that, uh, what he calls the ancient wisdom messages, mm -hmm. the truth about reality. Mm -hmm the empowering message that you're powerful, uh, that we were looking for him to appear somewhere in a human being or in some context that we would recognize it because it is truth. Uh, and seekers like me and you probably, we're always looking for the truth. Uh, so even though in his books with Jane, he mentioned a few times that he would only come through her uh, thousands of us were saying, well, why don't you change your mind, Seth? And I think that's what happened after 9-11. Um, a few months after 9-11, March of 2002, I was minding my own business in my little hypnotherapy uh, practice. I had this cute little studio in San Rafael, Marin County uh, in California. And I was... <clears throat> waiting for a woman to come in and we were going to do a past life uh, session with her. Um, now, I didn't know much about past lives. I thought of it as an intriguing idea and being familiar with the Seth material, um, I thought this is something to explore. So my mentor at the university, in the meantime, I was going to uh, Dominican University mm -hmm. to learn how to be a marriage and family therapist. Um, but when I met with this woman, Cass Smith, for the uh, the regression, basically, uh, that pushed all of that stuff out the window. Uh, she came in, I regressed her, she immediately tuned in, apparently, to a past life in which she was being devoured. <laughs> Mm. Um, by lions in the Roman Colosseum. So I sort of panicked for a minute, but then I said, wait a minute, project consciousness out of the body, take it up as far as you can, and tell me what's going on. You don't have to feel the pain. She did that and described over about five minutes. It only took the lions apparently five minutes for them to clean it up, <laughs> to devour her. 
<clears throat> so she described to me what that was like in a very scientific monotone. Yeah. Uh, I have that on tape, and I refer to that often. Uh, so I brought her out, and we made, uh, we were pretty excited. We made uh, an appointment to see each other in a few days to do this again. But in the meantime, she phoned me up and said, Mark, uh, she was doing the Benjamin Krem transmission meditation with a group at that time, very powerful uh, invocation of Maitreya. And she said that <clears throat> some spirit, some guy, she said, is breaking into my meditation and saying that he wants to write books again. <laughs> he calls himself Seth. You know about Seth? Yeah, yeah, I know about Seth. Uh, I've been a student for uh, many years since I was uh, 18 or 19 with the first books. Uh, so I was initially suspicious because about ready to graduate from the university. And I was thinking, well, my colleagues are putting me on. They knew I was a Seth guy. So, oh, Seth has returned. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, let's see if he's returned. So she comes in for her appointment. I did a brief induction, and this is all on my YouTube page. I videotaped all of this stuff verbatim. Do, do you have the original tapes? Yeah, I have yeah. the original yeah. tapes. Yeah. Uh, most of them, 80% of them, are on our YouTube page, mm -hmm. and you can view them. Mm -hmm. uh, Seth Publisher at YouTube. Um, <clears throat> Out, literally, after a few seconds of inducement, suggestions, you're getting sleepier and sleepier and sleepier. Uh, and then I asked for Seth to come through, and she said in this guttural voice, Mark, I'm here. And I had this moment Please. of recognition. Wow, maybe this is true. It was uh, sort of a telepathic thing, but I gave him some confirming type questions, sort of drilling him on uh, questions that only Seth would know or Jane Roberts and her family, stuff that I'd researched, private stuff. He answered them uh, adequately as far as I was concerned. So excitedly, we commenced with Literally, I think it was that day that we started writing the first book. It was amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah, the first book, 9-11, The Unknown Reality of the World, our first book. So, so for, the, that's, for those, that's, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a massive story to this, right? And, and I just wanted you to get that bit in there. That's an important part, that is. Um, yeah. For, for those uh, people out there who will say, well, no, 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 you know, uh, Jane, if you read one of her books, I can't remember the particular book it's in, the particular line it is in there, Seth said he's only going to work through us. But that was, you know, uh, uh, that, that, that was never answered in the pretext of actually, well, that just means for what the, the, the time that Robert and um, Jane were, you know, on this, in this incarnation on this planet for. I mean, it, the, uh, the question was never put, well, what happens when Jane and Robert are passed on? You know, would Seth come through someone yeah. else? I agree. I think, I think you're right on with that. I think, and we've sort of drilled him on that. Uh, why did you say that? And he said, well, that is it. I was not going to muddy the waters by coming through uh, others during that time frame, as he says. Her lifetime is what he means by time frame. But but there are uh, there are some out there that said that he would never come back because he wouldn't you know it would dilute the material if it started coming through someone else it would dilute the material the quality of the material he was putting out. I hear that a lot. Um, well, people can read our books and see the videos and make up their own minds. Uh, I don't call it a dilution. I call it a different interpretation. Yes. I'm a male. Uh, Jane was a female. I'm um, a writer, mainly academic mm -hmm. writing, because mm -hmm. I, I went to college for umpteen years. Mm -hmm. Jane was a poet. Uh, I'm interested in uh, shamanism, uh, psychicism, theosophy, that type of thing. Jane was sort of a recovering Catholic. 
Now, all of these elements uh, combine to make her particular belief system. And thus, I think, from my perspective, uh, had an effect on her, um, the manifestation of Seth through her. Uh, I have this different set, this different skill set, uh, and he comes out differently through me. When he was coming through uh, Cass Smith, the woman that I hypnotized, it was also a different expression. She had a, <clears throat> a difficult childhood. Uh, she w was also a recovering Catholic. So the first book is all about that. I mean, you can read it as a sort of a subtext. A woman trying to escape a difficult childhood and the sort of dominating, harsh authority that some people find in Catholicism. When we published the first book, I was raring to go. The first, the first people we contacted while we were developing the book was Robert Butts. Uh, he wrote us back... We thought we'd get his blessing. He wrote us back. He used to communicate in these neat little cartoons yes. on post-its sometimes or scrap pieces of paper. Yes. I have a collection of them. Uh, and he basically said, uh, well, I wish you luck with your project. But he also included some other people that claimed to their material, other people that claimed to communicate with Seth and write material through him, which was, I could see what he means about this is obviously not Seth, uh, but <clears throat> he essentially gave us tacit approval, I think, with that document, and so we went ahead with it. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's not an easy thing to do what you've done, but like I said, I can't remember the other woman's name, sorry about that, but she, if you, the, 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 um, I'll, put, I'll put her in the link. Um, because I tried to, I, I contacted her through a third party just a few weeks ago, and she turned down to do the interview. She didn't want to do the interview. Oh no! Yeah. So it would, I just because I thought, well, someone else because she actually did bring through Seth, and she's done two books on Seth, um, and um, wow. and she's still she's still around as well. So you're not the only one that's published books on on Seth, but um, yeah, fa fascinating um, that that you had Robert there as well, and you know. You, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not here to 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 try to win over and convince people and and w uh, whatever they've got to say about you. Um, it's just this really happened. You really had this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, lady that came to you for a, for a hypnosis session, and Seth came through, and um, obviously then then eventually Seth, you started to channel Seth. So there was a bit of a jump between. Um, going through the original source that that came into for for a regression to coming through you. How, what was that transition like? Well, that transition was about um, Cass's reluctance to be the mouthpiece for Seth to be a public figure. She is not comfortable being a public figure. She has a teenage daughter who's grown now <laughs> mm. to raise. Uh, she was living with her husband and she wanted her privacy. So we essentially agreed that I would be the mouthpiece promoting this original work, this first book, 9-11, and we would go about it that way. Now, uh, over the course of a couple of weeks as we published, she became increasingly more uncomfortable with the idea of instant uh, notoriety uh, becoming famous because you know it's funny she uh, she did not know who Jane Roberts was had never heard of Seth when we got together uh, she was very surprised but in doing some research uh, after we completed the 9-11 book she read in one of Jane's books about the fans, uh, Seth students would come and camp out on their porch waiting to hear from Seth and Jane. She didn't want that type of uh, <coughs> being famous. No. And so she decided to leave everything to me. 
and went to essentially uh, <clears throat> uh, study with uh, Benjamin Cram and be a part of that practice. Yes. Uh, she, she was a very gifted, she is a very gifted medium. I mean, it was amazing the way that uh, she could bring in these different uh, entities and such. Yes. Very skilled. Well, well you know, Benjamin Crane, I mean, I mean, you know, yeah, and, and that's a different level of information as well. And, um, oh, yeah. you know, they've got a different truth as well. Uh, in, in that group, and you know that's that's that was her spiritual practice, wasn't it? Uh, that that's what she needed. Yes, Ab abs absolutely. Right. Um, so you know, well, you can't make this stuff up. It really happened. It happened this way. I mean, what people want to do is yes. say, well, it never happened that way. You're deluded, and and, and you know you're, you're making it up. But you know, actions. You know, you were there. You saw your truth. This is what really happened. You you can't convince anyone else. So, but that's 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 okay. That's okay. At least you've been brave enough uh, to stand in your truth and to go forward. So by standing in your truth and going down the path you've been on, which was, well, let's face it, not the path that you presumed that you was going to go on in your life, how fulfilling has True. this path been? In retrospect, it's been very fulfilling. Uh, I was trained uh, to be a marriage and family therapist. Uh, so I know, <clears throat> ironically, <laughs> when I was being uh, trained and going to classes and such, I was learning how to, I didn't know it at the time, but I was learning how to be uh, a voice for Seth individually with clients because currently our uh, what we do here at Seth Returns is take phone calls from people and do our phone sessions. Uh, we have people from all over the planet who phone us up regularly and Seth advises them, whether it's for 15 minutes or an hour and a half sometimes. Yes. Uh, and if it hadn't been for that education, I don't think I could articulate Seth's messages to these people within a, a context of um, right. healing basically right so so on. everything that you learnt everything that you've that you've that you've become the person that you had become in all the years prior led you up to bring in Seth through you would not have been ready to bring that level of energy through otherwise and especially with the foundation of words that it that it needs as well to to Etiquely, if I'm using the right words there, uh, bring through the information so that 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 it's so that you you know you're. It's like this. It's like almost like if you were to bring in you know scientific information and having no ba basis yourself for that, uh, it, I don't think you'd be able to translate it very well, would you? I would agree. Yeah, I had I developed sort of in a uh, coincidental and serendipitous way the skill set required to be. Uh, the publisher of Seth's new books. Yes. I was very interested in uh, uh, what we used to call desktop publishing, which now they call publishing. Right, right. <laughs> you know, electronic uh, digital publishing. So I sort of cut my teeth on that and uh, found that when initially, I have to bring this up because initially I thought, oh, I have to call, I have to call the people at the... Uh, Mark Allen has uh, all of the uh, Seth titles from Jane. Uh, he's reprinting them and publishing them for the good of humanity, you see. And I thought he would be on this. Uh, we can publish these as part of the uh, Seth uh, literature. Uh, but he said, I think that would be uh, unethical. It would be a conflict of interest, is the way you describe it, which I, I was sort of offended at first, but now I think, oh yeah, he's he's trying to protect what he sees as uh, his uh, ethical yes. demonstration. Yeah. Um, and how many how many books yeah. how many books have you brought through with Seth? Well, the first book, nine eleven, was uh, we. We wrote it. Uh, Cass and I and Seth wrote it. Uh, since then, I've written ten more books with Seth. Wow! Written by me 
in front of my computer channeling Seth. Yep, yep. That's incredible. Yeah. Ten books. That's a lot of information. That's a lot of information. Mm. And what is the, what is the actual? Where has the energy flowed from those books? And there's in the sense, what are they about? Is there some sort of common theme with them, or is it sort of an evolution starting at the beginning phases of sort of easy stuff, and then it's getting to a bit something a bit more challenging, or is it all at a, at a, at a, at a, a bit of a different level this time? The information. I'd say it is at a simplified level mm -hmm. during this presentation of the Seth, uh, we can't call it the material, the Seth transmission. Uh, it is simplified. And, you know, he's, he said that in our first conversation. It's on um, our YouTube page. Uh, he said that, you know, uh, <clears throat> he used to, he said he used to be sort of pedantic and used flowery language and went on and on. Uh, but during this uh, piece, uh, this new demonstration of the material, that he was going to simplify it uh, so that more people can get the message. Yeah. He said the first time around, he described it as very few people reading my books. Uh, I sort of clued him in and said, you know, uh, seven million, something like seven million? Uh, and he said, oh, that many, that many. He was kind of surprised, to, uh, yeah. <laughs> be that as it may. Uh, he wanted to simplify it because he, he started coming through a few months after 9-11. And it was his feeling that we were on a trajectory downward mm. towards what he described as global thermonuclear war, uh, a war of Earth, you know leading to total destruction. So he came back and apparently the decision was, well, let's not be technical, let's use language that people can understand. He chose new age nomenclature uh, because so many people are familiar with that, sort of a combination of uh, popular psychological terms. Yes. Uh, with spiritual terms intermingled, Eastern spirituality and so on. So how easy is it for you to bring Seth through? It depends. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about how it was with Jane, but with me, he comes in in a few different formats. Right, right. <laughs> uh, the one I use most often is the one that we use to create books, which is a really deep uh, full body channel, he calls it. Uh, it means he comes in, I, I hear a little click, and if I'm not prepared, he just begins. So I have to be prepared with uh, pen and paper or word processor, you see. Uh, that's the deepest we can get, I think. Uh, to get the Seth who creates books. There's another Seth who is sort of, um, I think in Jane's books they called him Seth Three, but this Seth uh, that I've experienced a few times is absence, absent the loving heart energy and very much focused on intellect. Uh, but <clears throat> the one I like is the loving, grandfatherly type of Seth. So that's the one I ask for. That's what I get. Uh, and when we write our books, that's what comes through. But when I'm with clients on the phone, there is uh, another uh, sort of frequency. It's not lower. But it's the same Seth wave band, as he calls it. But it has more of a connectivity about it so that the person we're talking to is involved in this yes. uh, circuit. Yes. So it does feel different. And it's uh, that particular uh, channeling phenomenon we, he calls um, overshadowing. Uh, he's, he's over here and he's uh, pretty intense coming through. There's another one he calls uh, mental overshadowing. Wow, there's a beautiful butterfly out there. Mm -hmm. hmm, Seth? <laughs> uh, another <laughs> one he calls mental overshadowing, and we use that when I'm in public. 
Right. Uh, it's less sort of invasive. Yes. It leaves me with partial control of my faculties. Yes. Uh, and that's that's what I enjoy the most because it's got about fifty fifty me and Seth in it. So so okay. So we're talking about different variations of Seth coming through and and and, and trying to make sense of what that is. Um, it, it, with human language, it's going to be kind of difficult for this interview. So, so really, we we um, uh, well, there's there, there's I mean, there's maybe an infinitive levels for the soul to progress onto. So maybe there's Seth on different, you know, that there's Seth is channeling maybe higher versions of itself or as its soul's already progressing on even though there's a part of it left behind at the level that it's at but it's it's a, it's if, if it's projecting into the future maybe it's able to project into parts of itself where it's already pro uh, progressed i don't know right um hi yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right on point yeah man. It gets it gets a little bit confusing uh, for people. I'm just trying to make it in a, in a kind of layman's term of what this could be. Um, okay, let's not complicate it any more than that because it is it, it, there is these different versions. Um, so, am I able to tap into you now to speak to Seth? What are you going to tap into, or what am I going to tap well, into? Well. Whatever wants, whatever wants to come to through, present. I think that I, I I don't think I would yeah, yeah whatever feels comfortable at coming in at this wavelength, especially when I'm coming out over Skype and um, I guess this is more like a maybe an example of a of a reading in a sense, but let's see what's also because when we do our our interview, that's when we're going to get deep, but that's a different vi vibration because I'm I'm in person with you then, this is a little bit different, right. so this is more I would say what you're comfortable with bringing through when you're do, doing a reading. Yes. Yes, he's already coming through a little thing, and this is how he does it. He sort of uh, he sort of sneaks his way in. Uh, so, and why? Well, because sometimes I get anxious, and anxiety pushes it away. So to make me feel comfortable with this transition, uh, he comes in and helps me let go of the ego intellect as he calls it. Uh, but he's telling me that uh, even though this is over Skype, <clears throat> this is a reunion type of event. Uh, oh. You are a... <clears throat> you are a partner here. Uh, when you feel that you are in connection with this Seth entity. You, you're a student. When you have an intent to connect by reading my literature, uh, you are connected. Your intent creates that connection. So yes, you're communicating through this technology. Well, that's pretty beautiful. Uh, that's pretty beautiful, actually. It's an exteriorization. Yes. As Mark said earlier. Well, I know you're there, Seth. I, an inner process. Absolutely. I know, I know. Thank you. Thank you for that. I know you're there, Seth, and I know you're always there, as are all the entities that are coming through right now to help. help um, well, it feel, almost feels like it's helping us to to just shine a bit of a light on, on the masses just for awakening or maybe the right people that are going to awaken so let's let me ask a question and then then we'll, we'll, we'll take it for, take it from there so okay well the 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 sort of direction my work's gone in recently is getting more and more people in to talk about well different frameworks of reality is it is it true seth that there is other frameworks of reality that have not come through yet because the time has not been right for our timing yet because it's not the right time for us to really get too deep into them but there is there is a different framework to the one that we all think there is out there right now a framework that's not been discussed or very literally discussed I would say you're correct um, to the nth degree we love that phrase, to the nth degree. Uh, there is a series of frameworks uh, that you're not familiar with, that are coming in, that are new. 
<clears throat> and to the degree that you are uh, courageous uh, and loving and open-hearted, um, you will find yourself uh, within that framework. Uh, <laughs> uh, primarily, uh, we, we take, speak in terms of the metaphors, dimensions, uh, you're in the third dimension. The fourth dimension is one that we call the afterlife or the home dimension. Uh, so let's talk about that. Uh, the afterlife is becoming an apparent to people in the third dimension. So that messages from uh, those family members who've made their transition uh, are coming through clearly now. Uh, these two dimensions are merging. What that simply means is that uh, enough of you are waking up uh, to your potential <clears throat> to see into this other dimension that it becomes possible because you create your reality. <clears throat> Do you see? Ab abso absolutely. So, so, you know, that kind of... I'm trying to use human terms here, Seth, for, for things that, that are um, a little bit... Um, uh, blurry sometimes and a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit of an illusion in a sense when you talk about the nothingness um, and, and even that's not the correct word for it so yeah I love what you said there about the the, the, the dimensions are, are, are becoming uh, are, are sort of merging in with, another, with one another so so you know I keep saying to myself well uh, this dimension that I'm in right now of my awareness that I'm in um, is there something I'm missing here in the sense that is this all just an illusion? And it, and if it is an illusion, whose illusion is it? I would say that you're on the right track here. Uh, again, the uh, metaphor of uh, a dramatic representation uh, a repertory representation uh, with a reincarnational context. Uh, not only are you performing, expressing this aspect of where's it all from, all that is, uh, at this time, in different time frames, past, future, and currently, you have more representations of you, Kevin Moore, in this current time frame, counterparts. Uh, so you are experiencing <clears throat> your expression. Uh, this fragment of all that is, not only now in this moment, um, but in the spacious moment that includes everything, uh, past, present, and future. Mm. Does that make sense? Well, Your greater it does. personality, if you will. It does. It does. And, that, you know, and I've asked the same kind of questions in a few interviews recently, so I hope people in the audience aren't, aren't getting bored of this. But, you know, okay, I'll ask you this then. I mean, what about the illusion that this is, this is the heaven we talk about? What, what, what if we have already crossed over and this is some illusion that's been sent to us of, uh, to, to ease the process of crossing over easier? I mean, you're not going to give me any of the answers because then that's taken away my free will in some respects, right? But maybe my free will is okay if I ask the question. <laughs> maybe my free will it gives the permission by asking the question because you're at a level that you're ready to receive that kind of information. So is this some sort of replay of something that I've already been through before? I would say that you are a human being uh, learning particular lessons, uh, you have particular issues, uh, as you recognize your issues, uh, your issues are what pit you against other people. Uh, you identify that and you try to heal that. When you do, you can be said to be learning your lessons, uh, basically the reasons you're on the planet at this time. Uh, now, people are expressing 
our phone clients are expressing, this quality that you're hinting at of deja, a sense of deja vu. Right. It's as though I've been here before, I've experienced this before, what is this? Um, I would say that what this is is a memory of the future, not the past. You are coming into your higher centers of awareness. Uh, you are meeting uh, your future self sooner rather than later. Uh, as you uh, let go of <clears throat> beliefs that keep you, uh, let's say, hardwired to third dimensional reality, uh, you begin to see what's going to happen. Uh, you begin to be able to predict your own future. Uh, you can begin to trust your own uh, inner wisdom. Uh, so let me just say this. The feelings of deja vu will intensify. And I think it helps uh, to, I'm going to use a psychological term, reframe that. It's not the past, uh, it's the future that you're picking up on here. A future progressed Kevin Moore that you're communing with. Uh, when you send out a message, let's call it a prayer, uh, an entreaty, um, let's call it a hope. Uh, that information in the form of <clears throat> audio, uh, circular thoughts, ruminations, you say, uh, high emotion, and imagery, it lands somewhere. Uh, to use the metaphor that we enjoy in our books, it lands in the pre-manifestation domain that some have called <clears throat> the astral. It lands there, and it collects information from you, your hopes, your desires, uh, if you're trying to create it, your hopes and desires. It also uh, attracts and holds your fears. Your negative emotion rests there. It lands there. Uh, and that is how your so-called future is created. Uh, and in this process of creating consciously, which is what you're doing, many people are doing that now, uh, you get involved in a feedback loop in which you may have visions. <laughs> oh, I've been thinking about getting a new car. There it is driving. Oh, and there's another one. Uh, these are messages coming to you from this pre-manifestation domain that you're going to get what you want. Yes. Whether it's a, a higher consciousness or a new car. Well, thank you very much for that. So, all I'm thinking whilst you're saying that, Seth, is that, well, where's the true me right now? If, if I'm meeting myself in the future, where's, where is the bigger part of me really situated? Is it really here or is it somewhere else and I've just fell up, fallen asleep to think it's here in this illusion? This is not... I mean, this illusion seems very real. I mean, if you, you know, if you were to hit me over the head by a two by four, you know, the, the effects yes. are going to be there, right? But, and I ask this question, these bigger questions on behalf of all the audience members, really. You know, where is the biggest aspect of myself then? Because it, this, this, this still doesn't feel as though it's, this is it. This, this just feels like it's some sort of playback or as you call it, some future, you're meeting yourself in the future, but where is the essence of all of us then? Where, who, who, whose illusion is it? <laughs> I think you can reframe that idea of illusion. It's a production. It's a, it's a quality, a creation uh, of what's going on in your personal consciousness projected out through a portal in between your eyes and then perceived 
uh, as what you would call a reality. But what you're looking at uh, is <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> a product of this, what you would call consciousness, expressing itself. So let's let's say all that is what some people would call God, yes. goddess, fairy, you see? Yes. Uh, sends a fragment of its energy into the uh, body of the baby. It sort of initializes the human baby. Uh, and with that seed of consciousness, you grow and evolve, uh, you mature into an adult. Now this <clears throat> uh, aspect, this kernel of consciousness has some tendencies in it because all that is wants to express uh, itself in physical reality to the nth degree so that it can experience uh, everything that can be experienced uh, by human consciousness. Uh, you are on a particular mission in this lifetime uh, to articulate for all that is you, Kevin Moore, in the third dimension. It's uh, a particular idiosyncratic expression. Uh, it's not done anywhere in the past or in the future. It's only you now in this current moment expressing this particular aspect. Uh, so the idea of illusion, uh, I would prefer that you look on it as uh, a lesson uh, a demonstration. When I said repertory theater, what I mean is that now you're a man, you're in a male body, but also at this time, you're a female, you're 13 years old, you're in Europe uh, in a time of famine, you're not doing well. Uh, but the, <clears throat> let's say, personality aspects, the consciousness material of that 13 year old is being used by you in your current expression. It's there. It's there in you. If you wanted to research it, you could find it. You could find its effects. Uh, but also, obviously, all of the other reincarnational lives that you are pulling from, your higher self is pulling all this information in. What's going to help me now in this current moment uh, to use in your expression in this moment? Does that make sense? So it's not an illusion. It's a product. It's a creation. Your creation. And obviously, you're saying here as well, Seth, that all 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 time is is one. You know, there we what we think of the past or the future, really, in 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 the space where we come from, or the space where the, the true nature of reality is, or a truer nature than this, um, then everything is one. All those past future and present is happening now the now moment yes is where we are now and by by, by pulling into those uh by by going into ask those questions of, of what lives right now are affecting this current incarnation something would come to us something would come to us some answer would come to us as you say for myself that 13 year old girl right as i giggle saying that right uh uh, is somewhere else in, in a what we may class a past life not having a difficult time uh, but my higher self is pulling in aspects of that to seed into this so my future life my present life right now is healing my past life my future life is healing my past life my past life is healing my present life my present life is healing the part the future the future is healing the present it's all pulling in to itself in that sense but then Where's the bigger essence of me then? Where's the actual overall soul of me sat right now? Yes, it seems to be sat here, but and it's the consciousness, as you say, is coming through the third eye and projecting this reality. But where is the actual bigger essence of me? Is it everywhere? Is it just all that is? It is all that is, yes. You're an expression of all that is. You're an emissary from everything that is uh, to the third dimension. And let me add that there's a lot of this 13-year-old girl in you. She keeps you humble. She keeps you honest. 
she helps you to focus on what matters. So <clears throat> when I ask people to meditate for 15 minutes and attempt to access these other lives, what I'm really saying is uh, go on the great discovery. Go on the path of awakening. Uh, in 15 minutes, you can contact one of these other existences and prove to yourself that what I'm saying is true. You are a very powerful person. But if, <clears throat> if there was an aspect of me somewhere that was, you know, about to be, you know, as a heretic burnt on the stake right now, and that's happening right now, I can't go back. Yeah. Can I go back and heal that life so that I wouldn't have done those things in that life so that I wouldn't be burnt? Do you know what I mean? I, I can't. Is there a way to heal the past life? Or, or is that through just forgiving that past life that's happening now? And it heals some aspect of you in the present moment and your future lives and anything else that you're living as well. Well, what I think is important is to consider the main focus is you in this lifetime. And the way that these other reincarnational existences can help is to uh, allow you to see, well, well, I've, I've had some problems in this area. Uh, I'm finding that I'm drawn to this lifetime in which uh, it was exemplified. Uh, let's say you were victimized over many lifetimes, as everyone was. Everyone has been a slave, for example. But you would go there and you would say, ah, now I know where that comes from. Uh, in terms of practicality, it comes into your mental landscape as a negative thought that makes you cringe, lack, uh, ideas of slavery and being tormented come in from these other lives and they can pull you into a depression. Uh, but when you have this sense of being able to control your consciousness, uh, you find that you don't have to react to it. Uh, these notions that uh, you are in an unsafe universe come from these other lives, for example, because the universe is essentially quite safe. Uh, it's an abundant universe for you. So what, what you're saying? <clears throat> Did that answer your yes, question? Yes, it does. What you're saying, Seth, is that is that um, whatever issues you may be going through now, if you just used a bit of quiet meditation and asked in that meditation, where is this issue coming from right now that I'm 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 suffering from, and if whatever comes in the first thoughts normally, which are normally the right th thoughts that first come in, uh, it's coming from a future aspect of yourself or a past life aspect, or maybe even in this life, there's another incarnation of your soul living somewhere else in wherever in the world, right? Maybe having some sort of experience. Yes. You just see what comes in, and then if it comes in, you can say, then say, okay, so it's from, this is, keep it easy, it's coming from a past life just right now, not, not, not a future life or in a present incarnation. You can say, right, okay, so that's where it's coming from. So how I would then how would then how would that knowing that information and, and apply how would you apply it to this life? So do you know what I mean? How would you say okay that's coming from the past life? So I know that now, but then uh, what do I do what do I do with it? What do I do to heal it so that it maybe makes this present moment easier and 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 and, and it transforms it? I think first of all. It makes um, <clears throat> victimhood unnecessary. You're not being tormented by your partner. Uh, you are receiving uh, this negative victim strategy right. uh, through uh, the auspices of consciousness yes. and believing it. Yes. Believing that this person in front of you uh, is out to get you, let's say. Right. Okay. to victimize you okay. or society as a whole is victimizing you yeah. uh, you're you're tuned in to that reincarnation existence in which you're a slave let's say when you recognize yep. that you can say oh that's where this is coming from it's sort of a 
reset button for consciousness where you get clarity on what's going on in front of you, particularly with regards to relationships with people. Right, so it's more of an acceptance. So, for example, if someone's got a debilitating disease in this life, you know, even if they bring in the information from a past life that, that this is the reason why they've got it now, that it's not going to transform that debilitating disease because, you know, things aren't going to transform like that overnight, right? Or maybe not at all, depending if you've had it from childbirth, right? So, but what it does do is it... Well, I would it frees dispute you. that. Okay, okay. Re yes, spontaneous healing, uh, an anomaly in medical science, and yet it happens. Uh, everything comes together for your healing, and so you do. But it does, it does take a dramatic change in belief uh, to create that. You're the creator of your reality. Uh, now, in terms of the malady, um, because everything is happening now in this moment, you're being <clears throat> influenced by all of these many lives. Uh, people who have uh, a life-threatening illness, let's say, uh, it is simplifying it to say this, but I would say that they are, uh, for their own reasons, personal reasons, um, focusing on lives in which they are uh, slaves, in which they are powerless, in which they're not being heard. And so that manifests in this particular life uh, as a person who has created a malady. They don't have power over their own bodies, you see. It's a great simplification, perhaps an oversimplification. Uh, but to give a little hope here, uh, spontaneous healing uh, is possible. And when you uh, go on a spiritual practice, let's say, uh, you learn what life is really about, the ancient wisdom practices, uh, you can learn how to turn that around for yourself. Uh, basically, uh, a reframe of the belief system how how would we I mean, whether this question is completely pointless or not okay so some of the questions Seth that are coming through me right now you know I'm not asking the mundane questions of you know um, well there's, these aren't mundane questions these aren't these aren't the the, the normal you know the uh, the the questions that keep coming through again and again and I'm sure that you would say well they only keep coming through because we never listened in the first place right I'm trying to just bring this up. Sorry. I'm trying to just bring this up a level, and I'm at the beginning of this conversation. I said I think there's another framework of reality that we've not brought through yet, and I'm still going back to that in this interview. I'm still trying to charge back to that. I'm I'm almost saying, well, well, is this what we've got? The reality that I see with my eyes right now and all my other senses. How, I mean, we talk about going home to a place called heaven. Well, how do I know I've not crossed over already and that this isn't a reflection of something else? How do I know that? I mean, what is, what it was, what is the good in even asking that question? Does it even matter? Well, doesn't asking questions like this allow us to escape from what may be the imprisonment that we're, we've created for ourselves, in, in a sense? Now, let me see if I can cast some light on this. Um, I think you're focusing on, um, we call it lack in my books, L, capital L-A-C-K. Uh, you're looking specifically, the intellect is looking for something uh, to, from my perspective, the <clears throat> what we call the soul aspect, the higher centers of awareness, um, soul, wants something else. It doesn't want to listen to your, uh, and I'm using the broader term, anyone's um, <clears throat> academic explanations for things. Soul uh, the higher centers of awareness burst through all that. They transform that uh, ego, intellect, construct into something uh, 
beautiful and helpful. <clears throat> In this case, I think the, you're doing uh, the seeker. Now, in my books, in my new books, I talk about uh, the benefits of finding. Seekers can become stuck on looking for things. And because you're identified as a seeker, obviously you haven't found it yet, or you call yourself a finder. <laughs> so your orientation is to look but not find. Turn that around and become a finder. So your orientation is finding evidence of truth in your personal reality. And you will. That's what waking up is all about in the context of my new teaching. Okay, okay. I, I, do you see? Yeah, no, no, I, I do, I do. And I'm going to read your books before I come to see you uh, through Mark as well. But, you know, it's just... We're always told this, you know, I've, I, of all the guests I've had on, it's always been the same thing. And I'm like, it's everyone says the same thing in, in some respects. I'm like, what if it's not that? What if it's not that? I'm not, I'm not talking about the hell or anything like that, you know, whether we create all that, Christ. But, you know, I'm talking about what if it's not what we think it is? And if it's not what we think it is, how does that help us? And if, it, 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 you can, yeah, how does it help us by, by going against what everyone else is saying and saying something different? Is is that the is that the burst of the bubble of my illusion in a sense? I mean, you know, do you know what it's like that film where you know he thinks he's in the the Truman Show where he's you know he thinks everything's the way it's supposed to be until he bursts out of his bubble and sees things from a different perspective because everyone's just telling him that's Definitely. the way it is. <laughs> yeah. So 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 you know maybe you're not ready to tell me anything more than what you can tell me because that's the level that you're coming from because you're part of my illusion but you're part of the awakening as well um. <laughs> huh. I would say that it's <clears throat> you looking uh, in my books I talk about uh, a type of personality no, I'm not saying you're this type but they read a spiritual book uh, and they get to the next to the last chapter and they say well this isn't working and so they find another spiritual book and they read it and they get to the second to the last chapter well this isn't working either um, read the last chapter because that's when the magic happens that's when awakening happens and it's it's like riding a bicycle. There's a certain tipping point when you uh, practice riding a bicycle that you develop this type of muscle memory and you find yourself moving forward. Um, but if you quit because it's too difficult, you're never going to... Oh, no. Um, yes. Yes. You're never going to the, ride that the, bicycle. Yes. There's no quitting and there's no easy answer, right? That's the great thing right. about this. Um, but then, you know, I've said this in other interviews, like a broken record. Why have I awakened and the masses are not? Am I the opportunity to provide those masses with windows of, hey, guys, there's something more. You've just forgotten uh, and you're stuck. You're not stuck, but you are on this constant repeat, 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 repeat. And why have I come off that compared to them? Um, yeah, I guess I maybe chose to come off it to choose to have that experience because, but then it almost says to me, if you chose to have that experience to come off it, how many times have you done this? <laughs> hmm. Well, let me see if I can answer that or elucidate on it. The idea that... <clears throat> you are awakening and you're wondering why others aren't. Uh, I think that's, that speaks to this tendency for people to uh, want the status quo. Uh, they want uh, an absence of change. They want to be, and this is 
uh, pervasive. Uh, they want to be told what to do. Yes. They want authority figures uh, so that they don't have to think about what they should do next. Uh, uh, these people are, they create a status quo reality for themselves. And when they join in groups, they create status quo collectives. Everyone in the same uh, type of trance. Uh, we call it the un the, the common trance in the books. It's very common for people to get together in groups and uh, find an authoritarian, strict leader to tell them what to do because then they don't have to wake up. Uh, but people like you are waking up. You're experiencing uh, the uncommon trance, which is just a focus on the interior reality. Uh, you're looking for your soul and you're finding it. You're looking for higher consciousness and you're finding it. You're developing a connection with um, the divine, with all that is, uh, with the great computer, if you want to call it that. Uh, and you're finding that it is somewhat challenging, uh, but worth the risk. So you're also... Uh, being courageous. You're waking up to love and courageously moving forward in your life, helping other people to do the same thing. It almost makes me think, did those masses of people, billions of people that are asleep right now, do that all for us? Uh, uh, is their biggest gift the biggest gift to the people that, that, that do want to awaken? So, so have, have they, have, you know, did, did uh, as a billions worth of souls did we agree that you know one percent of the awakened is what they would do it for they would shut themselves down so that this one percent of awakened people could have this experience are they our gift yes you could see it that way uh it's a collective effort uh the collective all that is everything is the collective and yes a certain element is waking up uh, the creative element, the those people, uh, those personalities that uh, find it, they don't want to be in groups of lethargic uh, slaves, essentially. Uh, and they find that the way out is to sort of be the opposite uh, of a slave and leads uh, from a visionary perspective first leading yourself uh, waking up on your own and then by example leading other people uh, usually uh, according to the uh, virtues the human virtues you say it's always been that way I think if you explore spiritual literature it it usually involves someone uh the the wise guy or the troublemaker in the tribe wants to find a different way uh, and they find it usually connecting with aspects of consciousness non-physical beings gods goddesses uh, and getting direction from them very important to bring that in uh, you're being directed by your higher centers of awareness exemplified in these uh, your guides uh, and this conversation is ongoing as you awaken <laughs> so how many levels are there above you I said earlier that we use the metaphor of dimensions dimensions Yes, for uh, purposes of conversation. But the reality of the situation, part of the expression, is that uh, what people call heaven, what we call the home dimension, uh, what people call the astral plane, uh, that we call the pre-manifestation domain or dimension, is here. It's right here. 
it intersects the third dimension. So wherever you are, you take all these so-called dimensions with you. Uh, I think discussions that talk about uh, <clears throat> how many levels there are uh, help you to deny the fact that you're in it now. Okay. You're in this, you're at the center of all of these different <laughs> dimensions and potentialities. Well, I ask that because I'm thinking, well, how many levels are there above you that you're not even aware of and you have no conceptualization of what they are? I would say that <clears throat> uh, because I am not special, uh, I've lived many lives. I no longer have a need for a human body, but I have witnessed uh, despair and ecstasy in many different bodies, both male and female. Uh, but in my last incarnation, uh, I realized that it was time to get out. I, I'd learned all that I needed to. Uh, and so in that, se in that sense, I became absorbed into the greater collective that I refer to as all that is. Uh, you will too when you're done uh, on the physical plane. Uh, everyone will do that. Uh, and whether they return back to do it again uh, to create uh, a physical life of lessons and issues uh, is a decision that you make in this home dimension that we that <clears throat> let's say contains uh, your uh, consciousness expressions uh, from all of your reincarnational existences but uh, you maintain your mm -hmm. uh, consciousness when you make your transition but but I could I could I come back to want to repeat this life in a different way Oh, yes, you do. You're doing that now. You're creating your current, what you think of as me, you're creating your current life in all of its multitudinous probabilities now. So, so, but you're only choosing those probabilities that you find pleasing. So, so I'm, I, there's, there's different, find per, per, beautiful. So there's different aspects of me out there living a different, even if, even if it's just I'm sat a bit further over there and experiencing life from a different angle, yeah, it, it, or yes. whatever's different, some aspect is different, different enough for it to cause different out, out, outputs and different variations in, in the now moment, which all goes back to the, the collectiveness. So there's, there's an infinitive maybe number of me out there having a different experience, mm. but it, yeah. Trying to use linear words, or uh, uh, yeah, trying to use human words here to describe it is difficult. So, 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 really, when I said that question of, of how many levels are there to go to, or frequency, how many frequencies are there to go to, really, I, I, I was thinking when the soul progresses onwards, you know, then it's going to heaven, then it may go beyond heaven to somewhere else, and then another level beyond somewhere else, and beyond somewhere else, but. You're saying it may not even be like that. You're saying it's all now. Even all those, even that understanding of another level yes. is not. But what? But 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 it always feels like it's going to be a bit bit boring. You know, for some people, they get to heaven or home, and it's like let's twiddle our thumbs and you know whatever we're going to do. It's just everything's kind of perfect. But it's not though, is it? It's just as difficult as here. It's everything. It's everything. You're conceptualization of time uh, is an illusion. You were talking about illusions earlier? Yeah. It's an illusion because everything is now. Uh, so the, you couch your words in descriptions that imply progression. But there is no progression. There's only expansion. Uh, expansion of ideas, emotion, imagery, and it's infinite. It doesn't have a beginning or an end point. It has the eternal now. The spacious moment that you and I are sharing now is all that we have. And let me put this in. Within it, all that is. Everything is expressed potentially in this conversation we're having with each other. 
Do you see what I mean? <laughs> so, so when someone's, you know, when we write these books about people's truths of, you know, where we go to, we get a life review and all this kind of la di da stuff, which is all very beautiful, right? And there's pretty, there's, there must be truth in there somewhere, right? Because lots of people say the same thing. Is that just maybe to get? A, is that really what happens, or is that to get us to a point? So that it expands our understanding even further, so that when we do uh, leave this re the, the, leave this time space and go into non-linear, actually that was just a stepping stone to get us to somewhere else, which it's not even the way it was written about. It's something even this idea of a different framework. It's something even more. These are everything that's expressed in books on this level is just stepping stones into something that's beyond our understanding because it's not really what happens but it could happen because you, we create your reality so you could create that reality when you cross over that yeah let's go for the life review or there's mum and dad they've built a home for me or this there's this but actually it's not that you've just created that it's more than that <laughs> <laughs> yes I talk about that in my book on death and dying uh, okay. specifically though um <clears throat> I enjoy the metaphor of uh, the consciousness, the individual consciousness, the brain as a governor. Uh, it takes and interprets only what it needs of all that is to create you and your identity. But it can pick from everything that exists to create you and your identity. So it has to govern very strictly to keep you in a sense embodied and not bonkers <laughs> because if you choose too much from all that is uh, you could be identified as well that guy's crazy because he talks about seeing things and so on so you create uh, a stable identity mm. uh, through this governing consciousness of yours but you're still in the middle of everything that exists, <laughs> making it happen, you see, you and everyone else. Let me also add everything else, because what you think of as inanimate material is composed of consciousness. Oh, yes. Yes, you make out of consciousness units everything, everything that you see everything. and identify as, oh, this is a book, yes. this is my computer. It's, it's conscious. It's consciousness within it having an experience. That's right. But is the if I was to say to you, in an in probably an unanswerable question because maybe we're not ready for this, right? But it, what's beyond all that is? I would say that all that is continuously subsumes uh, <clears throat> consciousness and then expands beyond that. And it, don't get caught up in terms of progression. Uh, it's all happening now. So what's beyond that? Uh, it is beyond that uh, in this moment. That's kind of vague, but it's a feeling. It's not an in intellectual concept. It's a feeling of expansion that people who have uh, waking visions, for example, they describe it as ecstatic. I've never felt that way in my life. They've experienced themselves at the heart of creation, you say. That expansive moment when you realize, well, I am everything. I am all that is. They're having an awakening moment. I used to think to myself as a kid, what's beyond black and white? What's beyond nothingness? If something went on forever, what's beyond that? What's beyond? What's beyond? What's beyond? And I'm like, well, why did I come? Why did I forget about what's beyond? If I'm if I come from the from the all that is, I must have an awareness of the awareness of awareness. But the forget me not of coming down here, you purposely forget, don't you, to 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 have your human experience. But then, but then, you're kind of cruel to yourself in a sense because then you have an awakened experience like. I have and many other people have and then you start asking these questions <laughs> so yes <laughs> modern culture it prevents you from experiencing your source uh, you come here uh, and yes you know it all you are indeed a Buddha baby you know that expression on the 
faces of mm. babies where you see, oh, this is an awakened soul. Uh, they still remember where they were before birth, you see, in the other body or perhaps in the uh, other dimensions. So you, you do come in with an amnesia so that you can live a life of, uh, hopefully, uh, as a scientist of consciousness, we call it, exploring your personal reality, discovering who you really are, discovering the truth, you see? Uh, if you had full knowledge of your past lives, uh, you would be distracted by that. And so, in a sense, you do come into this life with a mission to do things in uh, not a specific way, but it has a general feeling tone, we say, uh, that you to explore in this particular life and because you live countless other lives uh, you're busy exploring uh, to a safe degree I would say all that is uh, yes as a whole yes yes in order to become a, a well-rounded soul so that when you reach this <laughs> apex of uh, consciousness uh, as I have, and I'm using humor now, uh, you have the benefits of all that experience. And then, in a sense, you... <clears throat> now, I'm using uh, metaphors here, of course. Uh, in the home dimension and extra-dimensional exploration, you know each other. Uh, you are recognized by other souls that you have lived with in your different repertory expressions of all that is in human bodies and in these other dimensions you you have uh, telepathic conversations and you discuss your various lifetimes <clears throat> and I think that's an important thing to stuff. Uh, because this is where you yes. get your uh, mythologies uh, of the, uh, the ascendant beings, the gods and the goddesses that are looking down on us. That is you looking down on you. Yeah. 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 And, and you say to yourself sometimes, you know, well, you know, could life be different? You know, is, it, it, uh, would, you know, am I... Am I supposed to be doing what I'm doing right now? Is everything just the way it is? Is it? It's just perfect, isn't it? This is just where you're supposed to be right now. There's nowhere else where you're supposed to be, you know. And there's no, there's no comparing to no one else. This is where you're, you're, you're at right now. And, and, and you know, you're, you're where you. But you can change it as well. You can change it. You are in charge. You can change it. Yeah. Let me reiterate. If you are courageous and loving now you're doing your job you are doing what you came here to do but if you're afraid and angry uh, you're denying your mission in physical reality it's the opposite of what everything that is wants for you so if you're afraid and angry if you're acting like a slave if you're being controlled by governments or human individuals, you're not doing your job. The job of visionaries everywhere, people who are waking up, mm. is to wake up and then tell the others. Okay. You see what I mean? I do, I do. Well, I know that right now, uh, we've, we're just almost at the end here. What would you say, Seth, is the most important message you'd like to give to the audience right now? Let me say that there's a tipping point that's been reached, another metaphor we enjoy. Uh, I'm not talking about a literal tipping point. Uh, I am talking about uh, a collective potential uh, that exists now in this moment, uh, in this modern world of yours, in which... Uh, you can make a decision to do the right thing and that it will have <clears throat> massive uh, positive repercussions throughout consciousness in your world. Uh, 
that's what a tipping point means. Uh, it's your responsibility to remember you're here for a reason. Uh, and the next person you see, let's say, after you watch this recording, uh, express love for them and courageously tell them your story and repeat as needed, as we say. Uh, that's how you create positive realities. Uh, if enough of you do it, the new earth emerges. It's barely visible at this point, but many people uh, are witnessing it. They're living it. They're embodying the new earth. They have a smile on their face, open hearts, uh, courageous <laughs> in the extreme. Yes. Uh, I think I'll let it go with that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's, Seth, I just want to say I can't wait to see you. Thank you for bearing with me there for all that time. And we'll just let Mark just come fully present back. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Mark is fully present. Mark is fully present. Mark is here. <laughs> uh, thank you for just um, kind of stepping out the way there just a little bit, just to let Seth through. Uh, well, we, well uh, the version, a, a version of Seth through as well. Uh, yes, that was a mental overshadowing. Overshadowing. Yes, yes. I think it probably needed that for for for, for this. Um, uh, that, that's going to take me a, a little, a few things just to watch back and digest as well. And I really hope it does help a lot of people with their questioning on, on this subject as well. And I hope he wasn't too hard on. Oh no! Very beautiful. No, no, no. Actually, Sometimes. it was really interesting uh, what the group had to say. Very, very interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's never straightforward, is it? It's never what you think it's going to be. <laughs> no. No, it's not. So it's serendipitous. Yes, serendipitous. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, look, if people have made it to the end here, God bless them as well, because we're one hour and thirty minutes into this. Where did the time go? Right. Uh, we've been linking yes. up your phone numbers to call you for readings. We've been linking up your Indiegogo campaign on the screen as well. Uh, we've been linking up your books, your website, and that's all been coming on on as we've been talking. So. Um, uh, Mark, I, I, I just really can't wait to see you, brother. Thank you for allowing me this, this massive chunk of your time right now and, and, and for doing the work that you're doing and being that brave soul coming forward as well, helping people awaken. I just had a good idea. You can be in our movie. Ah, <laughs> well, when I come over, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's done. it's going to be fun. That's done. We'll do a, a little bit together, you and I, about higher consciousness. I think that might be cool. Yeah, okay. I think we'll get lost. Well, I'll get lost in it. But yeah, yeah, that sounds beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Absol All right. absolutely beautiful. Yes, and you can use my equipment for that as well when, when, I, when, I, when I come. We, we, can, we can swap equipment. So, okay, well, look, um, blessings to you and just thank you so, so much for joining us today. I thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. Appreciate it. We all appreciate it here. Carol, myself, and our animals. Well, we've come to an end on today's show. Don't forget that you can listen and watch all our past interviews on the More Shows official YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new daily shows. You may also find out more on our past and upcoming guests by going to themoreshow.com and do like us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates. So until next time, be safe.